I finally, finally was able to secure. Oh my God. Oh man. These are fucking dope. Yo, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got a detailed look and review on these bad boys right here. Yes, I finally got a pair. It is the Ama Manier Airships. I will say the box is just gorgeous. And I know that it's just a black and white Nike box, but they also have the Ama Manier kind of like logo or branding just embossed all the way throughout it. It's so, so cool. And then inside there, you also have their paper and everything like that, which is pretty standard for their other releases. I grabbed these on sneakers and I the last time I checked, they were still available. Let me see if they are right now, though. They're there in a ton of sizes. It looks like they're missing like nine, nine and a half, ten, but they do have ten and a half and then eight and a half and below. And then there's a random 14 out there. So if you're a big footer, go look at them. But as far as releases are concerned, I do think that this is one of the best of the year. Uh, not because it's a collab. It's just the, the shoe itself is just such quality. I just absolutely love it. If you saw our previous review on the white and gray pair, these are on par with those. And those were bar none, like the best airships that I personally have purchased. So there's that. There is another collab that I actually got in that I totally forgot about, which I feel awful about, but I did get them like way after the release date. But just in case you wanted to know my thoughts, um, these are the corporate airships. I also got a uh, sneaker Dave's a friend of mine. So he signed the box in there for me, which was dope. But yeah, theirs actually did not come in. Yeah, I thought that was a two. I know it, it's weird. So yeah, it didn't come in an airship box, which is strange because that would have been badass if that was like a Tiffany looking airship box, it would have looked sick but these guys right here are really nice too they actually have really nice new buck and then the rest of it which i'm sure you could you, you probably see it from there super hairy suede it's fucking gorgeous and then i love the back where it says got him i just dig it so much um but yeah i feel bad that well that, that's kind of what happens when stuff comes in like after release dates, the interest goes with it, which is unfortunate. I'd love to talk more about stuff like that, but we do talk about things like that in our podcast. So we do like shoes we didn't review and all that stuff. We also explain why and things like that, just in case you're you know, interested in like the uh, goings on of YouTube and the algorithms. Now, as far as these go, these are just so pretty because they're so simple. I like it. Only thing I don't like, and I'm just going to get that out of the way right now, is this midsole is just... What, what happened? It, looked like, it <laughs> like, looks like a dog dragged its butt across it. Exactly. Like there's vintage and then there's pre-vintage and then there's this. And this reminds me of when the AJKO first released and they didn't look anything like the real AJKOs, like how the current models do now. But they came with the Jordan 1 midsole and they tried to pre-vintage or pre-age the thing and it looked fairly similar where it looked like somebody just peed all over it and it dried in weird blotchy places. And I don't love that. I remember taking a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and cleaning it off. But that's the only thing that I don't love. Uh, is it something for me to easily look past? Of course. Normally when I see the shoe, I'm looking at it from like a top-down view like this. I'm not seeing that, so it's fine. It's just something that I don't prefer. Now, as far as the airship is concerned, it's a beautiful shoe. It's the one before the one. So, Rookie Michael, 1984, he was wearing these. This is actually a modified version of the original airship, which was originally intended as a follow-up to the Air Force One, but it was meant for like quicker players, whereas an Air Force One was kind of like a bulky, chunky shoe. Now, MJ didn't like the original tooling on that shoe, even though it was supposed to have been catered more towards a player like him. So what they ended up doing is modifying his PEs to look just like this with what would eventually become the Air Jordan 1's cup sole. So they ended up putting that on here. Uh, and it's pretty standard practice when you're like wear testing stuff where like the shoe that's the wear test product isn't the official shoe. You know what I mean? Like it's not all the way done. A lot of times they'll make you test kind of the outsole first and then it'll be on some random ass upper. And same thing with the upper where they'll put the upper on a random midsole that way in case pictures get leaked you don't know exactly what the shoe is going to look like when it finally comes i am very very sneaky sir and again one of the things that i just love about the airships is that they do come with these little booklets uh, this one talks about the tech features and the tech specs for this particular pe version so you can see that it is rubber capsule inside that capsule is a polyurethane wedge inside that polyurethane wedge is an encapsulated air sole unit but then when you flip it over and you see the actual like grid of like hey this is what the support feature is for and this is what this panel is for that's the original airship that's the original tooling right there but again i just love that they come with these i think that it's awesome and extras that they do come with by the way uh they come standard with these kind of like i guess they're white laces they match the upper really nicely and then they come with these laces that i, I just i don't know what the 
Those are gross. They look like the midsole. And then they got some black laces, which is dope. And they also have a brand new keychain, which I really like. Now the shoe itself is board blasted. So it's the original torsion support back in the 80s, back before they used torsion bars and carbon plates and TPU plates, P-backs, all that kind of stuff. There was cardboard. Ooh. You know, fancy feature, I know. I gotta say though, learning what that board last was all about was one of the most mind blowing fun facts I've ever had in like recent years as far as like learning about shoes. And I just thought it was really cool. And I can't tell exactly, but it looks like the lining has the same like A, I like guess it's, it's fabric, so it's really hard to tell, but it looks like it. I don't know if it's supposed to be. It's definitely a different texture than usual, but uh, yeah, it just looks really cool. Now on top of that, the insole is awesome. It's a polyurethane insole. It's very thick on top of that. These things start off pretty stiff, so when you first put them on they will feel a little lackluster but the more that you wear them they just feel really really nice also there's a uh, embroidery or stitching right back here not usually my favorite thing you can kind of feel it crater in your heel or if it's a little patch you can feel it pushing in your heel so i don't love that but either way it's a premium looking and feeling feature so it's always a plus when that's on there so yeah the logo and the numbers that are on there are all stitched on it is weird though because they went all the way through they didn't just like stitch the lining and then glue it on they went like straight up through the insole it's kind of a weird thing to do now the materials like i I was saying are very on par or similar to the gray pair so if you like those you're gonna love these i really like all of the weird trim that's the thing is that i don't love the the yellow stuff like streaks all over the midsole but i don't mind it all over the cut lines i think that it looks like like that's proper vintage and just in case you were curious the swoosh and the black collar right here are a very nice new buck we just talked about the air jordan 3 off noir or whatever same material beautiful and then the branding on the rear is co-branded so you've got the Ama Manier logo on one side and then the traditional Nike Air on the other the tongue is pretty standard as well as far as like an Air Jordan 1 and an Airship release so you got a nylon tongue you've got that yellow padding behind it so that's why you got that kind of pre-vintage look right there you've got a special tag on here this is very similar to the previous Ama Manier release for the Airship where that was like the main like collab feature you know what I mean so you got Ama Manier under there uh, it's very small it's very subtle so if you don't like it you should be able to get past it. If you do like it, then it's there and you should enjoy it just fine. Now, as far as sizing is concerned, I would go true to size. I think that they fit perfect, especially once they start breaking in. Like this is one of those shoes where not only does it look vintage and does it look 80s, but they feel that way too. Like when I wear these, once they're broken in, I just feel like I'm just wearing like an old ass pair of shoes and it just feels amazing. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I really appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned for whatever didn't make it in the video that probably should have. And yes, boys to men, well, well, they're not back, but they kind of never left. You know what I mean? They do their shows, at least three of them, which is kind of sad. With that being said, peace out and enjoy this. Is that what you were thinking too? <laughs> <laughs> I could tell by the laugh. She's like, this is getting cut. Bam. It's your outro. It is getting cut. <laughs> I'll play like yesterday underneath it. Like from Boys to Men? <laughs> no, the Beatles. <laughs> oh. I don't think uh, Boys to Men did yesterday. I was thinking yesterday. Boys to Men did do yesterday. Oh, I miss Boys to Men so, so much. And you think, can look sad as you look off into the distance. That's the thing. I think that, <laughs> I think they they covered the song. Who did it best? The Beatles, Boys to Men, oh, there's or not Jody? E <laughs> there's not even a there's not I even know. a question. The Beatles, please. Mm -mm. No, get out of here. You get the out Beatles of here. didn't have to do with the Kangol. <laughs> you yesterday. get out of here. Nah, man. Boys to Men is legit. They're one of the best, <laughs> best to ever have done it. Motown right. Philly, back again. Let's go.